you're firing up, I'll go ahead and start. I call the Wentwood City School Board to order July the 22nd. Uh, please stand with me for Pledge of Allegiance. time if you've got a cell phone to pull it out and put the ringer on silent or turn it off so it doesn't interrupt you and embarrass you. Let's see we have uh, some folks that came this evening that would like to address the board. Oh roll call Mr. Seymour sorry. Mrs. Emmert? Here. Mr. Pennycuff? Here. Mr. Thomas? Mrs. Burns? Here. Mr. Cleary? Here. We have some comments from uh, three stakeholders in the community. We'll start with Mr. Brandon Weirs. Thank you. I want to comment uh, to the board and um, the public about this uh, nice report that was presented at your last meeting. I wasn't present for the entirety of the meeting, but I saw it online. and. Um, I want to make some comments about it tonight. This is, I'm holding out the Winton Woods City School six month academic plan, which was delivered to the public in a public meeting that I attended last November. Uh, it was at the same meeting that uh, I believe it was John Ford presented a summary of his research results uh, dealing with a community survey about the acceptability of a new building plan. In any event, this subject came up for discussion. It's the uh, uh, benefit of, it had the benefit of a prior release of an academic report card from the state uh, Department of Education. And I want to just comment a quick read of the summary, a quick summary of this analysis provided by Dr. Sokol at the last meeting reveals that there are 14 strategies and goals. Four of them were met. Ten of them were partially met, and four were not met at all at that time. I suggested at the time of the meeting and the presentation that there might have been a, a greater focus, and I want to reiterate that now. Good mentoring, I think, would have suggested there be more focus than 14 for a six-month period of time aimed at a academic achievement improvement. What that does, uh, if you in fact confuse tactics with goals, is proliferates the activities that are involved in getting to a point, end point. And that sets you up for failure and the person responsible. That's a little bit of what the background I have about strategic planning brings me as an interpreter of the outcomes. You can do better if you have more focus and if you distinguish between tactics and goals and strategies. Well, so I want now, though, to ask, is there a follow-up plan the public can see, like this one, which in November reached its maturity in June of this year? Now what's next is the question that comes to mind. Is there ownership by the board to ensure, in fact, that there is a follow-up plan that can be made available to the public. I attended the preceding four years of report card presentations and I heard disavowal of ownership by the board as if there's some other way to explain what's occurring and a variety of suggestions repeatedly were made but the public like me, I'm a longtime stakeholder I expect better board ownership than that. I expect more engagement, and I expect more leadership. I look forward to seeing the follow-up report if there is a strategy that can be made available and known to the public for going beyond what was accomplished by this plan. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Weirs. Um, any comments? 
well, I'm going to take a stab at making a comment, not really wanting it to be dialogue, at least at this point. I think if you hit the website and you look at the other plans and strategies that we're working, that we're working simultaneously with the six-month plan, an example might be um, the Ohio Improvement Plan, OIP. You'll see that there's a plan and a strategy. You'll see what the measurables are and how we work that. That's just one of multiple plans that we were working. Um, the data, you are correct, the data that Dr. Sokol presented last month, um, in some areas we met, some areas we didn't meet, some areas we were halfway. If you benchmark that against the scores that our administrators were able to get, it was a win, 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 win um, across the board. Um, did we meet all the indicators? Did we meet every single item, all 14? We, we didn't. But if you look at the results that we were able to get in a short period of time, they're pretty good results. When, when does the final come out on that, Jim? The, we will have. Because we just uh, have the preliminary right yeah, now. So. We've got preliminary, I'd say maybe in a week and a half or two weeks. Now, the value add is the one that we have to wait on. And that's a really important right, measure for yeah. the school district, oh, yeah. guys. Yeah. What we're really looking at right now is performance index and value add. Performance so index is looking pretty good at this point. Value add, we don't know, uh, but uh, there's hope on that. So we're, we've made we've made some headway um, in we're that area, and I, and I think it's just it's worth it's worth communicating that so it doesn't sound like the story is one sided, and that there's seven educational plans going on, on simultaneously. There has been. Are those seven plans all, are they all on the website? I, I'm not exactly Probably sure not. If, all set, if all seven are. Um, they include Race to the Top, they include the Focus Schools Plan, they include the Ohio Improvement Plan. Uh, there are a couple of board plans, one of which was the one you had, had in your hand, and there's a uh, board plan from 2011. So there was a number of plans. What we're trying to do, and what we worked on at the Industries Retreat back in June, was trying to pull those into the Ohio Improvement Plan. Rather than having uh, uh, seven plans going at the same time, which is excessive. Yeah, right. So um, we're we're looking forward to Mr. Anthony Smith. He has been working on a plot on a strategy and a plan as well, incorporating all of these kind of into whether you want to call it one, but merging everything that we're required to do either state, federal, merge it all together so it's one plan instead of seven plans. Instead of there being seven owners, there's one owner or two owners. And the board will be 100% behind that. That's work that we've actually encouraged. Uh, under, under Jim Smith, he was able to identify the plans, bring it together in a, in a, visual, in a visual way. Um, and I think you and I even had a discussion about that. I'll, we could probably make that available to you so you could see all the plans. And then we're working on merging those. So um, I just don't want it to sound like gee, there's nothing happening in that area. Uh, I think the public will be delightfully surprised when the final test results come out. And I think to, to Dr. Weir's point, I think we still have an opportunity to broadly uh, broadcast and communicate yeah. all of the efforts that are going on and as well as the end results. Right. So look forward to coming back to that and engaging in real conversation but letting our new superintendent do it. Let's see. Anthony Schuler is our next speaker. Good evening, everybody. My name is Anthony Schuler. I live in Green Hills, uh, a tax paying citizen. Um, back in June, received a uh, letter from the, um, the Whitwoods District from the executive director of teaching and learning um, with uh, on the requirements to um, um, about the homeschooling issues and and to uh, um, uh, what's that word again to uh, let me see. what's that word I'm looking for but uh, to you know for the, the for all the stuff that you s submit to to, that, to allow your child to be to be released from the district, and there's a lot of discrepancies about it over previous years. All of a sudden, this year, there's a lot of um, demands on it that's um, over and beyond state law, and I'm sure things have got 
sent in the past few couple of weeks, to, and I'm hoping that everybody um, has um, has gotten those letters and maybe get get that under control and maybe um, sent out re resubmit letters to all the um, families that that are homeschooling as you know to to, to, e to ease the the pressures and um, you know with that with that and um, and on reading with the Whittenwoods uh, school district beliefs um, information about homeschooling students seeking part-time enrollment the board believes public school programs should be available to all residents of the community if they choose to participate um, under the service section on the website the Whittenwoods City School District is dedicated to the idea that every student has a right to an education that provides opportunities for the maximum development of his or her potential through participation in a world-class education. The district encourages, fosters, supports educational efforts for its gifted and talented participation through a continuum of services. And, um, and as with one of the services, with the extracurricular activities, I understand there's been some changes going on and, and under the, the policy that, that was adopted by you all back in 2008 with the two part-time course minimum and I understand that um, back uh, June 30th, um, Ohio um, revised, amended the, the um, well, with, with included the budget um, on on sports participation. And I was just kind of curious if 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 Whitten Woods would be would read over that and then render all their decisions that that ex that mandated the two course and go along with state mandates without any participation and find out you know it's kind of curious to see how you know the policies would, would work to maybe include you know the, the tax paying families to have their kids involved in sports you know it'd be kind of interesting to see you know that done. I like to get see my kids more as you know a lot of people put socialize you know they're socialized you know as it is but but get them in, involved in the maybe get them more involved in some other sports that they couldn't get with the city. So I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Or any comments? Well, I think part of Tony's question uh, is will we comply with the new state law? It's not an option. <laughs> details right. that we probably haven't seen um, and there's usually some delay 90 day delay before things like that kick in anyway so yes I was I was watching that legislation very closely and it, it appears to me as a novice uh, to, to the law that it opens the door wider than we opened it back in 2008 mm -hmm. yeah. or any other comments you're kind of asking your questions it's very timely one, the law was just enacted, and all the uh, all of the unintended consequences of the law on how do we, uh, for example, how do we look at assessments um, for eligibility? Gee, the law didn't address that. So not only do we as a school board have to look at that, and the administration has to look at it. The Ohio Athletic the Ohio Athletic Association has to look at it and kind of give us guidelines of. What do we use for those tools? Because they they don't exist. So it's a pretty it's, it's pretty complicated, but it's very timely. I even talked about it, you know, assessments in, in, in the policy in the thirty three nineteen section about how to be assessed and you have to participate in the year prior and so on and so forth. Yeah. I, I have a, a similar question, and one of the first things that occurred to me, and I don't yet we don't have the answer to it is in, in the school, in order to participate in extracurricular activities, including sports, the teachers have to um, submit rosters of students who are academically eligible before they can play in the next game or participate. I would anticipate that the teacher of record, which is you or you or you, would have to then um, verify that your son or daughter meets the academic criteria to be in the sport 
that particular term. And they ask for, uh, do students have to review like drug tests too, occasionally, and things like that? And, yeah. and I understand paying yeah. our portion of fees as well. As, you know, I mean, we're in the much more detail than I think yeah. We've, yeah. we've received. Uh, right, I understand. I'm just looking forward to see how the policy will be yeah. work out. Yeah, we'll have to revisit that. Well, our district council is in the room and she's heard that <laughs> our superintendent will take it from that from that point and then will the information be transferred to anthony yes Please. yes yeah. great thank you alicia elam did i say that right is it elam okay thank you Thank you for taking the time to speak with us. Um, my problem is in regards to homeschooling as well. Um, again, my name is Alicia Elam. I'm president of the Southern Ohio Homeschool Organization. I am also a resident here in Forest Park. Um, upon sending in my notification, I received a letter back stating that I was not in compliance. Um, what I sent in was actually in more detail than required by state law. Um, and upon speaking with the, uh, the executive director of teaching and learning, um, she still did not agree with me. Unfortunately, at that time, I had to get an attorney involved, and that has now been resolved. My next issue um, actually is in regards to the bylaws that are uh, found on the Winton Woods School Board website. And um, what was sent out from the Executive Director of Teaching and Learning do not match. Um, on a letter dated for June 2013, the request for 2013-2014 school year must be accompanied by an assessment of the 2012-2013 school year. This assessment needs to either be standardized test results or a detailed written narrative of the student's achievement levels completed by a teacher who holds an Ohio teaching certificate. In accordance with the school board website, um, it does not state a detailed written narrative. As a matter of fact, it only says the assessment should include a written narrative indicating a portfolio of work done by the child has been reviewed and that the child's academic progress for the year is in accordance with the child's abilities. Looking further into the law, based on what Ms. Sokol sent, uh, the procedure for educating a child at home, Form 9270, uh, there's been some wording left off from what she sent out and what was found on the school board website. And I have those to show if you would like. Um, in this, it states in the letter that was sent out to families, you must submit to the superintendent at the end of each school year upon completion of any course of study taught at home, the assessment used and the performance results of your child that confirms she or he has mastered the content of the course. The assessment should include a portfolio of work, examples of test and test scores, resources and books used in course, standardized test scores demonstrating the student's ability, course of study completed, and the number of hours devoted to each study. That was what was sent to all of the homeschool families residing in the Wood School District. However, based on Form 9270, again, under the assessment it states, if you elect to home education your child for another school year, upon providing subsequent written notification, you must provide the superintendent with the annual academic assessment report including information related to the assessment used and the performance results of your child that confirms she or he has mastered the content of the course. The ass assessment should include a written narrative indicating that a portfolio of work done by the child has been reviewed and that the child's academic progress for the year is in accordance with the child's abilities, examples of tests and test scores, resources and books used in the course, standardized test scores demonstrating the student's ability, course of study completed, the number of hours devoted to each study of course, and an alternative academic assessment by the child's proficiency mutually agreed upon by the parent and the superintendent. As you can see, they differ. So I'm curious as to how this went to this not have the actual paperwork sent out to the parents that was on the school board website. Also, can you, could, and I'm sorry, could you just put this in context in simple words? What do you, what we is We want to know why the bylaws from Winton Woods is more strategic, I guess, than what is um, required by the state of Ohio. Fair question. 
that's why I brought all the, the paperwork with me. I mean, the state of Ohio, I mean, it only states um, that you have to submit nationally normed standardized achievement test results. Uh, they have to be done by a licensed teacher or um, a person, you know, that's qualified to do the test or a written narrative um, by a, a teacher. Those are the only requirements. It doesn't state that it has to be detailed. It doesn't say that we have to send in the number of hours. We're curious as to why all of a sudden these are now being asked when it doesn't state so in um, section 3301-34-04, the academic assessment of the Ohio did, ordinance. Did you get a response from teaching and learning or from our legal department? Uh, no. Okay. I have not yet. Um, but an attorney um, has also sent to Ms. Sokol um, a letter. That. Yeah, I've seen that letter too. Yeah. So we're just, you know, we want to make sure that everybody's on in compliance and, you know, understood and respected. You know, it's our right to homeschool our children. And, you know, we're in compliance with state law. We just would like to say in a good relationship with the, within the district. Well, we'd like that too. I mean, I, I would, I would. It sounds like there's some things that don't don't mesh through throughout. You you brought those to our attention, Mr. Smith. We um, I'll pass this off to you so you know who to get back a hold of. Um, well, why don't we? If there's a realignment of policy that needs and to take place, let Mr. Smith know, and then the board can kind of discuss realignment of policy so it does all align. Any other comments, board? At this time, we'll do a, a two-minute recess, and then we'll uh, move into approval of minutes. Thank you for the recess, board. Um, yeah. Mr. Smith, uh, approval of minutes. Mr. Seymour. Yes. Got the minutes? On the minutes? Yes, I recommend that you look over the minutes and submit them for review. Board, what's your pleasure? Yes. Hi. I move that we have. No, I can't. I wasn't here. I'm sorry. I move that we accept the minutes from June 24th as so noted. Second. Thank you, Mr. Seymour. Thank you. Mrs. Emmert. Abstain. Mr. Pennycuff. Aye. Mrs. Burns. Aye. Mr. Cleary. Aye. Mr. Seymour, Treasurer's Report. Basically, for the month of June, um, we basically ended the year, I'll, I think I'll just go over the end of the year rather than just the month, mm -hmm. but we ended the year to date revenues at 42.7 million of which 3.5 was collected in June. Um, our total revenues for the year were 42.7 with our total expenditures coming in at 39.2 million. Um, our expenditures were down 1.1 million from last year and they were down 2.5 million from two years ago. So it's a combination of the reductions that have been made over the last two years, all severances and unemployment being paid out, and we're starting to realize the results of our reductions that were made. Also on the expenditure side, the district made and all the administration pulled together and were able to reach the 5.3 savings on the appropriations. So basically, um, we increased our cash balance this year and which will help you stretch the levy as requested. One of the one things I would like to go over is that revenues were also over budget, not just expenditures down. Revenues were over by about 1.1 million. Um, 320,000 of that was real estate taxes, um, which is pretty close when you take a look at 20 out of 27 million. Better to come in a little over than a little under. Our foundation was up 250,000. Most of that was because our ADM was up by 22 students from the prior year. And as you know, under that bridge formula, the state had a pot of money. 
and every month we would get our payment, it would say where we were at with the total state ADM, and then we would have a negative. So it went anywhere from $200 per pupil, $149 per pupil, and it would subtract it off so that the state didn't go over the budgeted amount for the state of Ohio. Well, we started out the year, when we started the year, it was around $201. We ended the year exactly at 100 So we picked up some money by the total state ADM going down and the distribution out to all, all districts. And also, something else I wanted to make you aware of is that your open enrollment was up $300,000. Open enrollment last year was 720000 And on a funding uh, enrollment, not necessarily how many open enrolled students were here in the seats, but the state funds you on when they come in and go out, uh, you had 123 students under open enrollment that you were funded for last year. Great. So open enrollment yield you 1.5 mils. So we want to be cautious of how we proceed from here on out with our open enrollment plans and policies because now we're looking at millage. And I believe you started this just before I came, so I think you only have two years of open enrollment, if I'm not correct. It's been a successful strategy, it really has. So I just wanted to share those uh, items on the end of the fiscal year with you for the financial report. Thank you. And by the way, the general fund ended with $10.2 million. That's great. On the investments, um, basically I think I'll just share that for the year we earned $37,380. There were no new CDs purchased during the month of June. So we need a vote on this? On the investment, yes. Yes, board. Uh, let's take care of number four. Um, with no objections, the financial statements from June 2013 are referred to audit. And then we need a recommendation for number five. I move to approve the um, treasurer's uh, in, uh, report of investments as presented. Second. Mr. Seymour? Mrs. Emmert? Aye. Mr. Pennycuff? Aye. Mrs. Burns? Aye. Mr. Cleary? Aye. Thank you, Mr. Seymour. Mr. Smith? Okay, reports. Not a lot uh, happening here in July, but um, we do have upcoming school events, uh, obviously, with the school year kicking off in, in August, and uh, each of the buildings have, uh, have submitted uh, August events for the board to, uh, for the board's information, so we have that. Um, we've also got some information regarding enrollment, an enrollment report that was put together by our EMIS coordinator, and so uh, Bernita did nice work on that. Uh, did draft a question, but I will uh, get with Bernita on that and get a response back to Mr. Pennycuff on that. And that would conclude the reports. Moving on to um, recommendations. First recommendation is to uh, is a resolution for a retire rehire for Rebecca Smith. Rebecca is recently retired. She would like to come back. It's uh, to work for the district. It is substantial savings. I should note, and uh, goes right along with uh, Mr. Seymour's report in regards to uh, uh, the savings we've accrued over the years. So we'd recommend uh, that we go ahead and do this. And and uh, I don't know. I think. Courtney, what was the savings on Rebecca Smith bringing her back? Uh, it was over thirty-five thousand. So substantial savings, and we really have the same uh, uh, person in place we've had in the past. She she deals with our uh, homeschool kids, or no, our uh, home instruction, home instruction, home instruction. Home instruction. So slightly, recommend that we slightly different term. Yeah, it's different, as you guys know. <laughs> so I'd recommend that we go ahead with that this evening. Mr. President, I move to approve the uh, retire rehire resolution as presented. Second. Any discussion? Mrs. Emmert? Aye. Mr. Penica? Aye. Mrs. Burns? Aye. Mr. Cleary? Aye. Okay, moving on to personnel schedules, we have uh, four attachments on board docs, uh, resignation supplemental, certificated employment uh, recommendations, as well as leaves 
and so would recommend that list to you. It's a pretty substantial list. We've had a pretty good turnover this summer. I can tell you that that is a trend in the business right now, uh, probably as a run-up to the changes in the retirement uh, system that will be uh, fully impacted in 2015, but we are seeing a substantial movement of, of personnel at this particular point. So I'd recommend the, uh, the attachments uh, to you at this point. I move that we approve schedules A, B, C, D, and E as presented. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Seymour? Mr. Samert? Aye. Mr. Pennycott? Aye. Mrs. Burns? Aye. Mr. Cleary? Aye. Okay, thank you. Moving on to a resolution for declaring uh, transportation to be impractical. This concerns students attending Cincinnati Christian. Uh, I think we only have, Steve, three. three. And so sending a school bus with three students on it's pretty impractical based on the you know, size of the bus, fuel that's being wasted. Uh, this is an opportunity really just to ar arrange something with the parents in regards to financial support for transportation as a substitute for sending that, uh, that bus. So I would recommend the board that we go ahead and adopt this resolution. This is the first time I've seen student names and on, the, on the resolution. Mm -hmm. Is that different? Yeah, it's what. <laughs> okay. This is this is Courtney Sandy work. Okay, there. <laughs> okay. I didn't know whether that was a new requirement that we had to. Okay. I think we're being specific as to who it impacted. Thank you. Um, let's get a motion. Then I have a question. Let's get the motion. Um, I, I move to adopt the resolution. Second. Now, now my question. Discussion. Here. Appropriate parliamentary order here. I'm used to seeing a long list, a variety of schools. And I thought we had to renew that, or maybe we just did renew it every school year. Is this one addition to the long list? Okay. Is there going to be a follow-up? Yeah, during the normal time frame, and we don't usually submit that list to the board. And so this the this list. school yeah. will then appear with the other 20 right. or so in that list. The concern was the timing with which we're making this recommendation yeah, I request. I it, it would adversely affect the family. Yeah. Yeah, the school starts here in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and just for clarification, or, or my education, the, the first point with reference to the time and distance required, um, what's our, our, our framework here? Where, where, where are the boundaries? We're required to transport if it's within 30 minutes uh, as uh, defined by when the bus goes there in the morning, for example. Goes we do, we do test runs from, from the high school over to Cincinnati Christian, for okay. example. And we do that exactly the same time for uh, uh, that the bus would normally go to see if it, how much time it takes to get over there. Now, it's within the 30 minutes, so we have a legal requirement, uh, just a practical based on number of students who uh, we would transport. And if I understand you correctly, so outside the 30 minutes? Outside the 30 minutes, it's not an obligation to transport. So. So you wouldn't see in a lieu of resolution for students or for schools that are beyond that. So in this particular case, these students are within the, the 30 minute range. They are. But it's just impractical. Mm -hmm. Got it. So this, this resolution means that we're going to reimburse the parents rather than send a big yellow school bus. Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other or, discussion? Or help arrange alternatives. So. Yeah. Any other discussion? Mr. Seymour? Mrs. Emmer? Aye. Mr. Pennycott? Aye. Mrs. Burns? Aye. Mr. Cleary? Aye. Okay, thank you very much. Moving on to uh, policies. We had a first read on an updated um, third grade reading guarantee policy, which is required by, I believe, to be adopted by the board by the end of this month. Uh, there was a change in the law. I think it was what, Senate Bill 21, I believe was the name of that. But anyway, you now have this up for action. And this was, uh, again, we did a first read last month. We did two first reads, one in May and one in right. June. Yeah, this is kind of the third read with an addition. Yeah. Board, what's your pleasure? Mr. President, I move that we accept uh, the new board policy as stated. Second. Any other discussion? Mr. Seymour? Mr. Pennycott? Aye. Uh, Mrs. Emmer? Aye. Mrs. Burns? Aye. Mr. Cleary? Aye. You're just checking to see if we're alert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. I didn't call you Miss Drammer. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, we have a uh, revised policy that we did a first read on the student's personnel communication devices um, um, proposed policy, first read last month with a recommendation this evening. So I uh, would like to recommend that we go ahead and adopt that. I move that we approve the revised policy 5136 student person personnel communication device as presented. Second. Any discussion? It's just interesting to note how we have had to change our policy based upon real world activity and behaviors just within 10 years. Every time we do this and I read this, uh, I'm always in the back of my head, I'm always thinking, what are the unintended consequences? And you, you just have no clue until you take the step and you, you do happened? it, and then you find out uh, uh, that was not quite what we thought it was. But this pr proposed policy that we're going to vote on here in a minute feels much more practical it than is. our initial attempts to say, no way, keep yes. them out of the buildings. That was just yes. not realistic. Did we have, I'm sorry, did we? Uh, yes. Yes. Do we, we have, have a motion? A, we have a yes. second? Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Mr. Seymour. Mrs. Emmer? Aye. Mr. Pennycott? Aye. Mrs. Burns? Aye. Mr. Cleary? Aye. Okay, thank you. That completes my recommendations. Board of Education reports, Mr. Pennycott. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Just two brief items tonight from the legislative arena. Uh, first, I'd like to briefly touch on an item from the federal legislation era area. I don't report on that very often, but NSBA has been lobbying on our behalf to um, permit local boards to continue to have the authority and the flexibility to operate that they have traditionally had. And in the last uh, five or six years, there has, there has been encroachment from particularly the Department of Education uh, of constraints on local school districts sort of changing, beginning to erode the definition of local control, which is partially a myth anyway, but there have been some significant inroads into that to the point that our colleagues, other boards and other board associations around the country became very alarmed um, at it. And so uh, NSBA actually wrote a, uh, a bill called the Local School Board Governance and Flexibility Act that was introduced as House Resolution 1386. And that bill uh, would retain and um, put in local flexibility in what is anticipated to be a major rewrite of the Elementary Secondary Education Act, ESEA, the, the overarching bill that has IDEA rules and, and lots and lots of federal rules that these people could speak to better than I. Uh, the good news is that bill that our board colleagues wrote has found a warm reception among other members of the House. And so it has been attached, our, what you might call, our bill has been attached to a bill that has a good chance of surviving the arduous path through the legislation. So the first step was positive. That's the end of the federal legislation uh, update. Um, and just briefly, I wanted to tell you there, there continues to be uh, emerging analysis of House Bill 59 that uh, Tony referred to it a minute ago uh, as regards other features. Uh, as financial an analysts begin to look at the, the story behind the PR, um, a man named Howard Fleeter, which is probably the most recognized financial ex expert in the state of Ohio, wrote a major editorial that appeared in Saturday's uh, Columbus Dispatch. And part of the point of that is that while the politicians are bragging about putting more money into uh, public education, when you look at the total picture of what they're really doing, what House Bill 59 does over a long period of time, including what charter school takes out. His conclusion is that um, in, in the school year that's going to start next week or next month, 
school districts will have about a half a billion dollars less than they had or than we had in fiscal 2009. Mm -hmm. um, I brought a copy of the editorial to make copies, but the, the copying machine is um, all bundled up, looks like it's being ready to, anyway, it's not working. <laughs> so I will make copies later. Uh, it's an excellent editorial. Uh, you'll enjoy, no, you'll be frustrated at reading it. <laughs> You'll enjoy its competency, but you'll be frustrated reading it. So, Mr. President, that concludes my report. I would respond to any questions. Thank you, Mr. Pennycuff. Mrs. Burns? Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I skipped right over. Mrs. Yeah. Emmer. Thank you. I attended the Great Oaks Board meeting um, held in July. A couple uh, notes of interest. Uh, the placement data for the class of 2012 uh, the high school graduating class, 92% of them are employed in the military or continuing their education. And 45% of those are enrolled in post-secondary uh, studies. And among completers of the 2012 adult program, 91% of them are employed or continuing their studies. Um, ODE will be releasing the first report card for career technical education. They don't They'll get letter grades, but it won't look like our report card. Um, they'll be test or graded on other areas. Um, they, Great Oaks uh, anticipates receiving an A in placement and graduation, four-year graduation, and a B in the five-year graduation rate. Those are the three categories they've got nailed down so far. And um, they had 13 students that earned individual or team awards in national com uh, competition. Thank you, Mr. Cleary, for sending that. Um, I sent it to our board, and I sent it to Dr. White, and I, I just got an email. She sent it to the Great Oaks Board. So a lot of people are seeing that. It was a very nice video. It was. A lot bigger than I would have thought. <laughs> and that concludes my report. Were there any questions or comments? Mrs. Emmert, I want to say that, uh, one, thank you for serving on that board. Um, my individual company is recipient of some of those students. We have three students um, that are, will be seniors this year that are working for us, and we've been doing this for years. Uh, they produce a great product. They produce students that local employers absolutely want to hire. And that's the partnership, um, business. It is. It's you pretty know. spectacular. And, and the students that we seem to get um, are the ones that participate in Skills USA, which is a national competition for tradespeople, and they do excellent. I mean, these are probably uh, young men and women that are in the 98th or 99th percentile in terms of the kind of person that you'd want to hire uh, into your company. So it's a it's a and great we had service. Two Whit and Woods um, girls go not the same year go to nationals a couple years ago, mm -hmm. and so we've had our share of competition out there. So. Well, thank you for serving on that board. You're quite welcome. Mrs. Byrne. Um, as far as the uh, Financial Advisory Committee, we are pretty much on vacation uh, for the month of July uh, and, and trying to enjoy that as much as possible. The conversation will broaden uh, next month. I know um, Mr. Pennycup and I have had some conversations about uh, some extended financial implications with House Bill 59 and some of the things that other people want to hear beyond just uh, the, the levy information. Um, and so we're going to broaden that conversation in, in that audience. So that'll be next month. Great. Thank you. Let's see. Committee reports. You've given yours. Mm -hmm. Mr. Cleary, I'll give the uh, communication, um, community engagement report. Um, we're still one month out. We kind of keep saying we're one month out, <laughs> but we've met with uh, Anthony Smith on the data. Um, so now we know how to put the report together in a manner that will be functional and that he'll be able to use. So uh, we'll have a recommendation. You'll be seeing that shortly. Uh, part of that uh, communication audit and plan was the community engagement portion of what Mr. Anthony Smith will be doing. And he started that last week. He went and participated in the Green Hills um, concert on the green and was introduced to the community and had uh, an opportunity to meet some of our uh, community. Uh, it was a successful event. He's been doing the same thing in other, the other three communities, but I can't give you an update on what has been done. Um, 
as part of my as part of my report, and I probably should have said this right when we started after roll call. Um, Mr. Anthony Smith is out this week. He was out two weeks ago. He's had eight days on the job so far. It's been an extremely busy eight days on the job. Uh, he's out networking uh, this week uh, in the West with some potential business partners that we are trying to recruit to our school district, so we're really excited about that opportunity. Um, and this probably would be a great time under communications to thank Mr. Smith, and we'll do that appropriately at another time as well, but for filling in again this evening uh, and, and, and taking that role on. So thank you so much for doing that. Not a problem. Enjoy it. Uh, comments from members of the Board of Education Superintendent? Uh, Mr. President, I just have one. I had the opportunity to attend a United Way Impact Spotlight Luncheon uh, about two weeks ago with the, the, the topic being the CPS Community Learning Centers. And so some additional information was gathered. Um, Mary Ronan spoke uh, at great length as well as uh, Julie Doppler from the Community Learning Center uh, coordination area. And um, it's pretty impressive what they've done. Um, and one of the, I think, takeaways uh, in that area is that no two learning centers are alike. Um, really going into depth into what each community needed and what each school needed um, and not a cookie cutter approach. Um, but one of the uh, other, on the flip side, the other takeaway was that there was no additional uh, OSFC money for some of their spacing. So that was to be taken into consideration too when they were designing some of their buildings. So it was good information um, to bring back and, and possibly implement or at least consider as we move forward. Great, thank you for doing that. Mm -hmm. Any other comments from the board? Mr. President, I want to add my thank you to this Mr. Smith. <laughs> um, this may be the, the last meeting in which you'll sit in this chair and the, uh, the other Mr. Smith yes. will be here. But you came to us and stepped into a, a, a situation that uh, beg for some continuity and some stability, uh, professionalism, and you have delivered, you have more than delivered. Um, you haven't treated this job as if you were the interim. You treated this and, and the people on the, on the staff and the people in the community as if you're here for the long term. Um, so you, you've been very professional and personally I want to thank you. Um, thank you very much. Appreciate it's been a pleasure working with you. And looking forward to working with you as you move into other uh, roles, uh, working with uh, high schools in, in the area. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure working with the staff and with the board and with the community. Uh, uh, this is a very special district, and it, uh, it has such potential, as I've said over and over again. Uh, I think this district will reach its potential, and I think we'll I look forward to coming back a number of years from now. And, seeing where it is, but I have had conversations with the new superintendent. I feel confident that he's on the, he's the right guy for the job, and so uh, we look forward to the future. But thank you, board. Appreciate it very much. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Any other comments from the board? I just wanted to mention, in case you went by the high school a couple weeks ago, on the weekend, and it was packed. There was tents everywhere, there was cars everywhere. And they were holding a regional track and field, and those winners would go to national in uh, Michigan to compete um, for the AAU. And what a great honor for Forest Park and for Woods to be able to honor that. As many people were there, the economic development and the, and the economic boom for the hotels and the <laughs> restaurants and everything. I went by and I said, what is going <laughs> on here? And so we talked, stopped and talked to a gentleman that he said, oh, they're from all over Indiana, Kentucky, and, and Ohio. And so what a compliment that our stadium mm -hmm. is such a high grade that can hold and host yeah. an event like that. So I That was an absolutely to, huge event. It was. <laughs> it was. Hopefully it went off all right. I didn't hear anything. You know. It went fine. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments from the board? Um, I have uh, actually three. Um, one is, board, we've kind of had something on the back burner, and 
Um, we've had Mr. Smith, uh, Jim Smith, working on this, and um, our athletic director. But that's getting back into uh, an, uh, an athletic league, and, and it's time that we focus on that. Maybe a little, we we put some time and some focus on that with a new superintendent and the relationships he has. Um, it's time to tap that. Um, Mr. Anthony Smith and I have had that discussion, so I just kind of wanted to put that back on our radar again, and you know, hopefully in maybe the next month or two months or three months, maybe he can look, reach out to some of his uh, current relationships and see if there's an opportunity out there to um, get our students some better exposure than what they're currently getting. That was one. And the second item is actually kind of part of the, the Athletic League item, and that is We've had some discussions in the past about um, our transportation services and the cost of our transportation services and not being in a league has had a detrimental impact on us and that it's a lot more expensive. Um, in the event maybe that we don't get in a league, um, I have kind of an appetite to look at that again, uh, to look at is there an opportunity to outsource transportation and is there a, is there a substantive savings um, for doing that. I've also had that discussion with uh, Mr. Anthony Smith, and uh, that's something that he, he would support looking back into again. So I just wanted to kind of uh, let the board know that that's an area we need to look at again. Uh, the last item is uh, a board retreat, and we have two tentative dates. I uh, don't know if these work for you. September the 13th and 14th or September the 20th and 21st. And the agenda is not set for that board meeting, but that will be a, a joint meeting with this uh, new superintendent and the board. I'm sorry, what were the two September dates? September 13, 14, and 2021. I'm, not, I'm out of town for both of those. Well, what do we do now? <laughs> your, uh, you want to buy my non-refundable <laughs> tickets? <laughs> no. no. Uh, what I'll do is I'll get, I'll get with Anthony. These, these were dates where Anthony knew that he was in town. Uh, are there some dates that look good? And I'll work it the other direction. Mm. Towards <laughs> October or towards August? Which way are you looking? Um, probably later in September, but the sooner the better. 27th and 28th, I should be okay. I'm fine with that. Um, that works for me. I am out for three weeks. Starting September the 18th. And returning on October the 7th. Well, how about if we do this? Um, continue looking at your schedule, and we will firm up the date um, at our work session. What about firm? August 30th and 31st? Anybody? Is that too soon? It wouldn't be. I don't think it would be for me. I could do that weekend. Why don't we make that a tentative, and we'll see what Mr. Smith has to say. See how that works at the work session, but we'll make that a tentative, and I'll let uh, Mr. Thomas know. Mr. Thomas know. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I was going to say another Mr. Smith. <laughs> <laughs> so we're we're on schedule f for work session on, on the twelfth. We're still yes. Mm -hmm. And you just said hold the weekend of the August 30, 31 for the retreat. Yes. Got it. I can do. Yeah, I like the idea of sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. Also, okay. any other comments from uh, the board, Mr. Smith? I'm good. Thank you. All right. Uh, comments from the board or to the board from the association. Seeing no one present, there's no need for an executive session. We're adjourned.